ears. Ahead on prime time, three attorneys involved in several quarantine cases believe the government obstructed justice. Plus, vaccination efforts continue in Sinahanya and at the home of the Islanders. And senators are working on a list of spending priorities for the $664 million from the American Rescue Plan to present to the governor of Guam. Good and good evening. I'm Adriana Cotero. After nearly two weeks of being on the run, the man wanted by police is finally in custody. 33-year-old Eric Roy De Castro was arrested today. De Castro was wanted relative to an ongoing Tamuning burglary investigation, according to Guam Police Department spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapau. On March 31st, detectives executed a search warrant at a home on Estralita Street in Tamuning. As a result, items listed under the burglary investigation were located and confiscated. Ten days later, GPD issued the wanted flyer for De Castro, and then on April 27th, an arrest warrant came down for De Castro. This morning, he was apprehended by Superior Court Marshals at a Tamuning residence. He is confined at the Department of Corrections. A minor female victim of sexual assault testified this afternoon in former Airman Louis Anthony John Vargas's trial. It was day four of trial for Vargas. He faces numerous counts of criminal sexual conduct as a first-degree felony for allegedly sexually abusing a female minor known to him. The alleged incident occurred at a Manilao residence on July 26, 2018. At the time, the victim was nine years old. Now at the age of 12 years old, she was brought forward as a government witness and testified her recollections of the abuse. This trial is ongoing. Public Auditor B.J. Cruz is sticking to his position that the SH company should be debarred for a year from receiving any more government contracts for letting the administration use its Hagabaton building for two weeks for war claims processing. Cruz says as a former member of the War Claims Commission, he of all people supports the war reparation efforts. But he believes it was wrong for SH to do the governor a favor after just receiving a lucrative $3.7 million deal. In spite of how magnanimous and, and gracious that gift was, it cannot and should not continue. And vendors have got to stop doing that because it looks bad. The Basil Company, a competitor of SH, filed a protest over the catering contract, but it was immediately dismissed by GSA Chief Procurement Officer Claudia Faji. Cruz is challenging the position that he has overstepped his bounds. We're not going to let them get away with the reading that the OPA can only re uh, review a debarment, but we should also be able to review a denial of the a debarment if there is basis for that. And in this case, three weeks after the, 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 the um, office opened, they got a $5.9 million contract to DRC. And so it, it just looked bad and it smelled bad. And this practice has to stop mm. so that people feel comfortable about yeah. procurement. Cruz argues if the OPA has the power to review a debarment, it should also be able to review a decision not to debar. A recent uptick in COVID infections prompted the governor to announce Friday that she would be pushing back her May 1st plan to lift quarantine restrictions. GVD, GVB President Carl Gutierrez says it was not totally unexpected by the tourism industry. I know that the industry uh, is kind of disappointed. But the community may not be disappointed. I think they're going to be able to, they want to be able to feel safe themselves. And I believe the governor did right by making sure that although we're going to be disappointed here at GDP and the visitors industry, uh, she's got to be, be able to make sure that the, the, the community she serves uh, is taken care of first. And the visitor industry was looking forward to an easing of travel restrictions, but Guterres says they support the need for the public to further buckle down. They're not necessarily angry because they know that it won't be uh, sustainable if we open up too early without people really putting their, their own uh, responsibilities frontline. So uh, they're not angry because in, in their hearts and their minds, they know that disappointment, but it's up to us now to, to let's get back on track for May 15, as she pronounced. And, uh, and I know that uh, we're at 0.7 right now in our car score, and I hope we can bring that down. But the governor pushed back the lifting of quarantine for at least another two weeks to May 15th. There's a first time for everything, and apparently it's the first time the court has found the government obstructing justice. That's according to the attorneys who represent the several petitioners in ongoing quarantine cases. 
that's the first time I've ever seen um, a decision holding that the government was obstructing justice. Attorneys Tom Fisher, Jackie Turlahi, and Rachel Zuzu can't recall a single case where the Superior Court of Guam says the government has not only been obstructive, but also disobeyed court orders. And then on top of that, they also basically created the circumstance so that people were left in a quarantine without being able to understand what their legal rights are. Uh, kind of a horrible situation, at least the way the court describes it. These co-counsels who represent the several individuals that were stuck in a GovGuam quarantine facility say the court's description is on point. The decision actually outlined um, the, the behavior of the government through the Attorney General's office. It, to me, it, it, it's telling and I think for, I can speak for my clients when I say that uh, they feel now um, almost a year later uh, that justice is uh, being realized that their um, freedoms were were infringed upon uh, and basically it was they had to silently suffer um, for days at, at some point there was a 14 day mandatory quarantine in these facilities. The decision and order came down last week with Superior Court Judge Elise Iriarty standing behind her ruling to award attorney fees to the petitioners who were forced into a government quarantine facility. In the decision, the court criticized public health for shortcomings and highlighted how it's been over a year and DPHSS has yet to develop a public health emergency plan to implement a mechanism for the appointment of counsel at the government's expense. Attorney Azuzi recalls the first quarantine case. The decision actually states that the case of Robert Shaw was the first uh, kind of case that came before the court after the Philippines petition back in April of 2020. And that was brought on by Attorney Fisher. As KUAM reported last year, Robert Shaw, an active duty airman, was returning to Guam with a negative COVID test per DPHSS guidelines to attend his little brother's funeral. Shaw was placed in the quarantine facility after public health found out there was a COVID positive passenger on his flight. Attorney Fisher filed an emergency writ with the Superior Court demanding that public health show why their holding of Shaw is legal. That one case has been multiplied as these attorneys have filed numerous petitions on behalf of clients challenging the quarantine mandate. And due to the growing number of petitions, the court previously ordered the Public Service Defender Corporation to provide legal assistance to incoming travelers. This decision didn't just say, well, you know, the government was dragging their feet. This decision cited and noted that the government was actively working against the liberty interests of the people. And by the end of this week, the Supreme Court of Guam will hear oral arguments regarding the quarantine cases. As the governor has filed a request for declaratory judgment on the extent of her enforcement powers and if the judicial and legislative branch have a say in the matter. Earlier today, a COVID-19 school site vaccination clinic was held at the home of the Islanders. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has more. The Guam Department of Education and the Department of Public Health and Social Services hosted the clinic at the John F. Kennedy High School's gym for students who are 16 years old and above. GDOE's Interim Public Information Officer Michelle Franquez says these clinics are organized to offer the opportunity to students and parents to get vaccinated. Frank Hez says that the clinic's operations have been well and the department has seen an increase in individuals booking appointments. Actually, we saw a major increase with our JFK COVID-19 vaccination clinics. We saw at least over 250 people schedule online, which is actually our highest numbers that we've seen thus far. Frank Hez added that a lot of JFK Islanders are already vaccinated. When the JFK, uh, the JFK team uh, did their outreach to their students, we found out that many of our students are already vaccinated. So it's good to know that our island members are taking a more proactive measure to getting vaccinated for COVID-19. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Cheyenne Natelli, who is a high school senior at St. John's School, received her first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Natelli says that she didn't hesitate to get vaccinated and encourages island residents to do the same. Just go for it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people out there that are getting it as well. So if there are anything that you're scared of, I'm pretty sure there's other people that will go through the same thing. Atelli explained why she got vaccinated. Well, most of my colleges require a vaccination, so I thought I would just get it out the way. Reported for Guam's News Network, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen. In other vaccination news, Public Health held a village-based COVID-19 vaccination clinic in Sinahanya. The clinic was at the community center and offered up to 300 doses of the Pfizer vaccine to its village constituents. 
Mayor Robert Hoffman says the number of residents participating was greater than expected. A lot of first timers, which we're very happy about. That means people are actually out getting their second dose already through the UOG system and through the other available uh, areas. And so uh, we're just very proud that uh, our numbers are pretty strong right now. Hoffman added that approximately 148 individuals got vaccinated. A final list of spending priorities for the $664 million in federal pandemic relief money that the governor will be getting should reach her desk early this week. Speaker Therese Terlahi provided an update during her brief extension of remarks Friday. Earlier this week, we sent an initial letter that requested more information regarding what portion of the federal funds had been promised or committed to particular projects or agencies so that we have a clearer picture of how much is available for prioritization. We want to reiterate that all of us in this legislature are willing to meet to discuss at the governor's convenience the priorities for the people of Guam. As we move forward, we must get as much information as possible and be able to adjust what we learn locally and federally. Trilahi says they want to ensure that both federal and local funds are used in a fair and equitable way so that they reach all of the people of Guam. The governor had asked for the list by last Friday, April 30th. A date for the big meeting has not yet been announced. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. With Prism Home Wi-Fi, I'm not just getting smart Wi-Fi that adapts and delivers consistent speeds that cater to my lifestyle needs. Whoa. I'm getting peace of mind with real-time online security that monitors every device on my network. Parental controls with the ability to filter age-appropriate content for my child. And with HomePass, I have full control over my network and so much more. Experience Wi-Fi and beyond with Prism Home Wi-Fi, powered by Plume HomePass from GTA. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cowboys Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. Half a day. As we look ahead to a brighter tomorrow, Matson's commitment to Guam and Micronesia remains stronger than ever. While the world around us is ever changing, what remains unchanged is our commitment to you, our customers, and the island communities we serve. Shipping is what we do best, and serving our community is at the heart of everything we do. But we don't do it alone. This is why we support organizations that make caring for the people and the environment a top priority. We know that many count on Matson's lifeline services in the Pacific. And that's why we continue to work hard to ensure that our shipments remain on time all the time. Matson recently added another Aloha class vessel to our schedule. We now have two of Matson's largest and fastest ships serving Guam from the US West Coast and Hawaii. With our new state-of-the-art vessels, we stand ready to support the region's economic recovery. Thank you for the privilege of serving you for the last 25 years. And you can count on Madsen to be here for the next 25 years and beyond. Welcome to your wildest cravings come true. Where the abundance of a Chalupa Cravings Box is all yours. Savor this moment of pure Taco Bell bliss because it won't last forever. It's value beyond belief. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Round program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. As chair of the Committee on Senior Citizens, Senator Amanda Shelton said, caring for our Manamku is at the heart of our island's culture. What better way to celebrate Senior Citizens Month than with the establishment of a center in law that will provide legal services to our elders? We take you over to Manilao, where a ribbon cutting ceremony and proclamation signing was held. Tyler Matanani reports. It's not a time to go to bed, but a time to celebrate, as the governor said. It's been a long time coming, 
On Monday, a ribbon-cutting ceremony was held in celebration of the establishment of Guam's elder justice system, which will provide necessary legal aid to more than 400 of Guam's elderly population in waiting. Our Manamku are the greatest economic and social need of representation. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. Our Manamku are the ones that give us the guidance, they give us the direction, they reinforce our values as a people, our values as a community, and our values as an island. Bill 100-36 was authored by Senator Amanda Shelton. What is now known as Public Law 36-19 authorizes the Public Defender Service Corps to provide legal assistance to Guam's elderly population. Attorneys Kathy Seguenza and David Highsmith have already been assigned to the center. The new law comes just in time for the celebration of Senior Citizens Month and the grand opening of the Elder Justice Center. I cannot think of a better way for us all to kick off Senior your Citizens Month and celebrate uh, this time for our Madamku. According to the governor, there's been a rise in senior citizens' abuse, financial, land, and property disputes. Lieutenant Governor Josh Chinorio says that the biggest thing the center offers to our elders is access to services. They didn't realize that she was signing over the property. She thought she was only allowing them to survey the property. Different things like this present different problems. Uh, and this Elder Justice Center is going to um, do so much to really avoid and resolve those problems. So thank you very much. Several members of the Mayor's Council of Guam, the 36th Guam Legislature, the Judiciary of Guam and Public Health joined in the ribbon-cutting ceremony marking the opening of the center. Eva Madanku. Eva. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. 52 people were the first citizens to be sworn in on American soil this morning as the Dis District Court of Guam celebrated two naturalization ceremonies. In recognition of both Law Day and Month, the keynote speakers were Chief Justice Philip Carbolito and Attorney General Levin Camacho. The 2021 Law Day theme is advancing the rule of law now, in which A.G. Camacho honed in on during his speech as he described a personal reflection from his grandmother's past having to live through times of segregation and discriminatory challenges. I want to ask her what it was like to live in Virginia, Ohio, the White House, your husband's cooking for the president. And the story she shared was whenever she rode the bus, she had to sit on the back, in the back. That although she was a U.S. citizen and her husband worked in the White House, based on the laws of that time, segregation, she was not allowed because of her race to be seated in the front portion of the bus. And then as I speak with you today, I, I thought that, that was an appropriate message to share as we think about the rule of law, as we think about advancing the rule of law, as you remember that your citizenship and your journey to get to this point is a starting point, that there are still many changes that we need as a country, whether you're a citizen or not, and the responsibility to keep the, the ball moving forward when it comes to equality, freedom, and justice. Camacho has been a private practice attorney for the past 12 years, and he has handled more than 100 criminal cases and over 15 Supreme Court of Guam appeals. May is Mental Health Month and the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center has an array of activities that highlight the importance of taking care of your mental health. Taylor Ma Tyler Matanani has the details. The Guam Behavior Health and Wellness Center, or JIBWIC, reminds the community to take care of their mind. May is Mental Health Month and the agency invites everyone to participate in the numerous activities to celebrate. The month was kicked off with a virtual proclamation signing on the governor's Facebook page. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. Many of the effects of this extended public health emergency, including food insufficiency, financial concerns, and loneliness, were associated with the increased reporting of anxiety symptoms or suicidal ideation. On Wednesday, the Jibwick will have a call out for an art competition open to anyone up to 18 years old. Director Therese Ariola. And we encourage our families to encourage your children to express themselves through the arts. On Friday, May 7th, Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, there will be a kite festival at Adeloupe at 3 p.m. It's a green kite festival. You come, you fly a kite, social distance. 
We've invited food trucks. May 15th will be the Guam Behavior Health Fair at the Agania Shopping Center, and May 22nd is the virtual 2K 5K. May 29th will be the Wellness Light Festival at Adaloop. There will be food trucks as well as short films in the theme of mental health. On May 12th, families will be able to gather for lunch at the Jibwick Prevention Office for lunch hour with peace. Seeing that the volume of calls to the crisis hotline has tripled since the onset of the pandemic, Ariola says it's very evident that the theme is only appropriate as more people are seeking help. Before the pandemic, calls on average ranged between 25 to 30 calls a month. That number has since jumped to a staggering 550. If you don't Absolutely. have your mental health um, taken care of, we can't approach life. And life is beautiful when everything is balanced. For anyone in need of counseling services, the 24-hour crisis hotline is 647-8833. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matsunani. Over the weekend, the Guam National Guard held a change of responsibility ceremony at the Barragata Readiness Complex. Command Sergeant Major Celso Leonin assumed the position of State Command Sergeant Major of the Guam National Guard. This position is the highest ranking enlisted member of the Guard and serves on the staff of the Adjutant General as a senior enlisted advisor. Leonin replaced Command Sergeant Major Agnes Diaz, who will take her position as Commandment, Commandant of the Guard's 203rd Regional Training Institute. She was the first female to be given responsibility in May 2019 as the State Command Sergeant Major of the Guam Guard. Present was Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, who says that Diaz is loyal, courageous, strong, and has the passion to do the right thing. thanked Diaz for her dedication to the Guard and presented a certificate of appreciation. On Sunday, Raising Cane's lifted its gate and opened to serve the island residents at the Micronesia Mall. The new place to grab a bite is all about that one love and is known for its quality chicken fingers. Cane's serves a variety of menu items such as Texas toast, coleslaw, crinkle cut fries, and freshly squeezed lemonade and fresh brewed iced tea. The restaurant was originally scheduled to open on April 27th, but despite the four-day delay, General Manager David Martinez says that the grand opening went very well. I would call it a success. Uh, luckily, we had the we had uh, the mall security helping us uh, manage the crowd. Uh, the, the crowd itself was great. All the customers were happy. Yeah, so it went very well. Martinez believes that Raising Cane stands out because their menu is a lot smaller than other restaurants, which would allow them to work on consistency and speed of service. Coming up, Dave Delgado with a weekend roundup of sports. And still to come, we kick off our weekly series for the month of May called Mama Preneurs. Keep it here. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. You may ask yourself, what is a blue raspberry? Or a pink lemon? Or even a strawberry watermelon? But they taste so good in these Minute Maid slushies from McDonald's. Who cares? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink.
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. We get it. Living to the fullest is tough during COVID-19. You don't need to do it alone, and everyone needs a hand right now. We are here. Feeling overwhelmed? Call 647-8833 and let's talk. Mangegiham is a project of Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. There will come a time when people talk about how Hyundai makes the best car on the road. Now seems about right. The technologically advanced Hyundai Elantra is the 2021 North American Car of the Year. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. Let's get straight to it. We start the show off tonight with high school track and field from JFK. Check it out. Week two of the East and track and field season, the boys and girls 3,000 meter event got the day started at the JFK track. GW's Andrew Alcanaba hit a PR this season with a time of 10.44, crossing the line first. Alcanaba built a comfortable lead in the final lap of the race. Guam High runners Joseph Schwartz and Trayton Crandall came in second and third with times of 10.53 and 11 minutes. Panthers runner Mueller Sean came in fourth at 11.22. In the girls' race, it was a clean sweep by the Guam High Panthers, finishing first through fourth. Samaya Wilbank, 12.34 in first place. Molly Lang in second at 12.49. Haley Burns was third at 14.07. Kiara Paz in fourth at 15.13. Boys discus, tees and highs, Deshaun Warren placed first with a distance of 28.67 meters. Timothy Mimai from FD was second at 28.65 meters. Guam High athlete Randy Angoko was third at 27.97 meters. Sanchez finished fourth, fifth, and sixth. Girls 100 meter hurdle, Sanchez runner Taya Mendiola was first at 1833. Guam High sprinter Princess Fajardo was second at 21.72. Ria Guzman, representing Academy, was third at 28.72. Boys 110 meter hurdles, Giancarlo Hemmerlin from Guam High, first at 18.39. Teason came in second and third. Xander Duenas, 19.18. VJ Rosario at 21.87. Luke Tysipik was fourth at 21.99. In double I, double AG girls high school soccer, the St. John's Knights walked away 2021 champions after defeating the Notre Dame Royals 1-0 on their home turf. Kaya Malakuti scored the lone goal in the win in the 79th minute of play. My team um, definitely had my back on that. Um, I was getting down on myself, but nothing but faith and confidence in the team to keep moving forward. The goal didn't feel real. Um, we were really up in the moment, but my team, they just said, come on, push 10 times harder, and so we did, and we really fought to the end. Soccer means the absolute most to me, so this championship is one I will never forget. I think communication was really important because sometimes people would be a little off, and then uh, when a teammate would call them to fix their position, they were able to do that, and it helped with cleaner passes and eventually leading to score. It really means a lot. Um, Spending time with this team has made whatever we had of our senior year this year r really great. Academy and St. Paul met up in the championship game of the McDonald's High School preseason basketball tournament. Janelise Quintaniza with the steal and basket. She went coast to coast. Coco Paulino dribbles around the screen, pulls up and knocks down the deep ball. The Cougars scored on back-to-back -back possessions. Tori Rapatis' jumper rims out. She crashes the board and gets the rebound. Nice pass to Micah Joe Terlaki, wide open baseline. 
Academy comes from behind for the win, 41 to 39. Kaylee Flores with the deep ball here. Tori Rapatas answers back the other way with the three for Academy in the dub. In the boys' title game, JFK beat FD in overtime, 56 to 50. Matthew Santos with the drive and finish for FD. Islanders player Yobe with the hard take to the basket for the nice finish. The Friars were down a few key players in overtime because of cramping and an injury. This is definitely a great way to build the hype for the upcoming season. The boys' season tips off tonight with Sanchez taking on Teason at Teason. ND taking on FD at FD while JFK faces St. Paul at St. Paul. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. We're one of eight U.S. regional fishery councils established under the Magnus and Stevens Act. The council uses the best available science and local knowledge to develop fishery management plans for over 1.7 million square miles of our productive Pacific waters. We worked with local scientists and managers to develop an app that captures detailed fishery data. Accurate cast data from the fishing community are needed to sustain fish populations. Take a proactive role in fishery management. The power of data is in our hands. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. Press preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. Welcome back. In commemoration of Mother's Day, every Monday in May, we'll be featuring some of the island's multitasking mamas and their businesses. Tonight, we introduce you to a pair of mamapreneurs. Joan Uggen Charferas has more on Picasso Nannies. Mamapreneurs is presented to you by Denny's. Guam's Diner is always open. For friends and founders of Picasso Nenny's, Nicole Coco Manabusen and Daria Dar Calvo, it was about two years ago these stay-at-home moms saw a need for outdoor activities for kids, families, and for the community, especially with the island being so incredibly beautiful. Picasso Nenny's came to fruition in May of 2019. We are um, pretty much a pop-up shop and we hold events around Guam uh, for families and our community to come together. We've been getting a positive response from both parents and kids. Parents are expressing their thanks for creating this space to come and bring their kids where all the tools are provided to do whatever they are there to do, whether it's to paint, to hike, or to create flower crowns. All the tools are provided. The parents just need to bring their kids and kind of just watch over them while Dara and I host the class. The mama-owned business has held events at some of Guam's historical landmarks to include Plaza de España and Serena Park, where kids and even adults can be inspired by the beauty and culture that surrounds them. Dara and I try and come up with a theme for each event. So our last theme was Earth Day event. We wanted to kind of be surrounded by green trees and just a, a natural shade of Guam, the canopy. So Laddie Stone Park was the perfect location. So far, it's our favorite location because it just provides all that shade for the kids and roam around and it's blocked off so that they're kind of in a little protected area. As for how they manage balancing family life and work life, the two believe it definitely works out. Being a mom is a task in itself, but I feel that um, it's all at home. So our support system at home is really what pushes us to, to do better, to be better, and to be able to do the things that we're doing. So I don't think that Picasso Nenny's would be where it's at today without our support system at home, which is our other halves and our kids and our 
moms and dads, our families. So I think that that's where it's at. These multitasking mamas are extremely grateful for the support of the community. Thank the community for, you know, making it all worth it because the after every event, we look at each other and we're like, that was so much fun. We can't wait for the next one. And it's really you guys who help us um, create these ideas and, and motivate us to do more and be better. Yeah. So thank you, God family, <laughs> Guam, Viva Guam. As for advice they have for those mothers out there that are perhaps sitting on an idea or a venture that they want to pursue, don't be afraid to try and pursue your goals and your dreams. The, the hardest part is just doing it, starting it, planning it. Um, I'm so lucky enough to have such an awesome partner to do it with. So maybe if you're a little hesitant or scared, you can go out and, and um, find someone who wants to venture or who wants to partner in that venture with you. And, and you guys will make each other stronger, bring out the best in each other. And yeah, just do it and don't be afraid of the challenges because that's what helps you grow. And, and succeed. Mama Preneurs is presented to you by Denny's. Guam's Diner is always open. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout out to the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday on this May 3rd to Isaiah Shane Aloka Akfaji, to our Bugabee. Happy birthday to you as you turn five. You're becoming such a big boy, and we love you always, eh? From Mommy, Daddy, Alana, Kaylee, Hayden, Gavin, Sonia, and Emberly. Carlos Daniel Lau, happy birthday to you, and good luck with your studies at USC. Well done. We are so proud of your accomplishments as you go for more love from the House of Lau. Arlene Menno, happy birthday to you from your adoring family and Talia Marie Menno Moses. Happy birthday to Talia from your family. Also belated birthday wishes going out tonight to Dre Cole Antalan Bamba. Happy birthday number two to our lifetime MVP. You amaze us with your athleticism, strong throwing arm, and distance and knowledge of all the sports balls. Thank you for always entertaining us and may God protect you and bless your life now and forever. We love you, Dre Dre. Love mommy, daddy, brother, Drew Drew, sister Michaela, and the entire family. Happy birthday to Becky Stevenson, who was born on April 30th. Happy birthday, Becky. You played many roles in life. Teacher, boss, mentor, friend. We love you. Happy birthday from Berna and the family. And Tomas Edward Duenas II. Happy belated birthday, bro. You were born on April 30th. Love, Regine, in parentheses, your favorite sister, and your entire family. Well, you know what, guys? Celebrate Mother's Day because that's coming up on Sunday. Yes, May 9th. Celebrate with Cold Stone Creamy where they are waiting and ready to make you handcrafted premium ice cream cakes made fresh each and every day leading up to the night just for your mom so you can make her day. Place your orders today, like right now. Go. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and be safe.